Hey everyone, so this is the Casio AE1300 uh, WH and I'm going to make a quick video that shows how to disassemble uh, the watch down to its uh, most basic parts. Um, you won't need to go this far for th basic things like changing out the battery, but if you decided to add a lens filter to change the color or you wanted to cut out the um, factory polar filter that's uh, adhered to the glass of the watch. Um, it kind of helps to break things down so that way, um, you know, as you're adjusting things, cutting things, you have a, a more open um, uh, access to the watch, which makes things a little bit easier. Uh, at some point also, if you decide to go with a negative display, um, you're going to have to use uh, something to remove the glue that holds that uh, polarized film to the watch. So for me, I use this thing called Goof Off, and it's of course a liquid, so it goes everywhere. And it's just nice to separate the different parts of the watch so that way you limit what gets uh, wet and gets exposed to the Goof Off. So let's go ahead and get started. Just uh, turn the watch over here, and you can just grab a small... Um, I think they call these uh, micro screwdrivers. So you got four here on the back. Okay, we'll just set that to the side there. All right, next thing we do is take something a little bit fine tip and uh, let's get this o-ring or gasket off of there it's just made out of rubber okay and now you're you have the back of the watch exposed and you can see here that this is the battery and uh, here's the contact points where it uh, um, interacts with the pushers so what I like to do is if you're taking a look at the face of the watch you've just imagined the 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock position and that's kind of where I put my toothpick in to pry up gently so six o'clock here and usually that's good enough if you need to go to 12 o'clock then you're good to go so that's the uh, first part there now if you want to go ahead and take out the faceplate I use a toothpick because it doesn't really scratch and I go for a piece of the plastic that's pretty thick so that way you know it takes more of the prying force and is less likely to crack so that was pretty simple it's got those pretty cool sub dials on the, on the top there so we'll put that aside and this is the uh, plastic uh, case right there. Okay, so kind of cool. You get a little view of the inside and outside of that. So we'll put that to the side. All right, so this is the meat of it right here. Uh, so a couple things here is the assembly of this is pretty great because if you just kind of think of it like a puzzle, there's really only one way to put it back together. So even though it might seem a little bit overwhelming that, man, we've got a lot of parts here. Does this go up? Does this go down? What's the orientation? If you just kind of look at the shapes, you're, you're pretty good to go, okay? So what I like to do first is we need to separate this in half. So you have these clips here on the side, okay? And what we're gonna do is zoom in here. We're gonna do the middle one here and then opposite side of that, another middle one. And then 90 degrees of that, you have two. So just pry down and then you pry down. And so we're separating the battery from the main component or the main uh, display. So you can see that's why the uh, display kind of kind of goes a little dead there. Okay. All right, so this is the battery housing here. Okay. and. Sometimes, I like to do this over a towel so that things don't roll off the table. There's this little spring here. Okay, I don't know if I can zoom in on that for you. Yeah, might be hard to zoom in, but anyways, there's a little spring here, and we'll just keep that to the side, and I'll show you what to do with that later. All right, so let's get back to the main display now. So we're going to flip this over. Okay. And what I like to do is, uh, again, the toothpick is, is pretty much the only tool aside from the screwdriver that I use here. So I just go to the side, gently nudge it up, look for any openings. Okay, just kind of go around and then we, we take off this, this main, uh, I guess this would be the, I'm not very tech savvy, so I don't know if this is what you call the, uh, the computer board, but um, 
anyways, that's that part. Now, sometimes when you take this off, this part will actually come with it. And so it will go like this. Okay, I've already taken this part, this um, watch uh, apart multiple times, so it doesn't really stick anymore, but uh, that's what that's for. So we can separate this out. There's no need to keep that attached, okay? And now again, we're back to our display, okay? Now, on the back of the display, you have this piece of plastic. It kind of fell apart here. So let me put this back so I can show you what it looks like. Okay, so you're gonna have your main display here, okay? And then what we're gonna do is, just adjust the brightness here real quick. We can go ahead and pry up on a corner here and take out this plastic piece. It's a little opaque, okay? And you can see that when I took that out, the uh, high part of the opaque uh, tooth right here is pointing upwards. It's not pointing downwards. So again, I'll explain that when we reassemble it. Okay. And then now you have the main display. And there are two other parts that come out here. So it's going to be this black. Uh, I'm not sure what this is. It's, it's almost like a foam spacer. Okay. But we're going to go ahead and... Uh, just kind of tap those out and a lot of times they'll just come out on their own. Okay. I guess uh, tweezers would be better. There we go. All right. And you can see that, you know, one is shorter, the one on the top, and then one is longer here on the bottom. And that's, again, just one of those puzzle pieces that makes it easy to reassemble later. So we'll We'll put that apart. Okay, so now we we've pretty much just have one step left. And you have this main display with a plastic housing around it. Okay, apologize for my, my phone here. I don't have the best equipment here, so I'm trying to get it to focus. Okay, now in this watch, what you're going to look for is go ahead and just ignore the display. And you want to look at the plastic um, uh, case that holds that display. And what you want to do is you want to look for this tooth that almost has like a... Uh, a little plastic spring on the back of it. You can see it's pretty obvious here. We don't really have that tooth here on this side. We don't really have it here on this side. In fact, on this side, we have two teeth, and here we have nothing again. So you really wanna look for that one big tooth in the center, okay? And what you're gonna do with that tooth is you're gonna use my left hand here, is I'm gonna pull this to the left, and then I'm going to use my middle finger from behind to kind of push this display towards you and the camera. So what we're going to be doing is, if this is the uh, display, we're kind of prying it this way. Okay? So let's go ahead and I just give a little pull on the plastic from behind, middle finger in the back, and then you can use your thumb also, and then that display just kind of comes out nice and easy. Okay? And so that's that's pretty much it. So. When you're talking about like going with a negative display, um, again, you know, take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. I've only been working on this stuff for, you know, like a month now, but, you know, I feel pretty comfortable with it. But this is a standard display that you would get from your local Walmart when you buy the watch. There's nothing modified here. And you can see that right here at the very top, you can see it's more transparent here. And then here, it's less transparent. That transparent part is actually the polarized film that comes with uh, the watch. And what happens is that film is oriented in such a way that it gives you the type of display that you see in the store. Um, if the orientation of it is a certain way, then you will get a standard um, a watch display where the back is typically a light color and the numerals are typically a darker color. Um, you're seeing a few more watches now where the display is a negative display, where the background is black and the numbers or the numerals themselves are white. And what that means is, um, I'm not sure how they do in the factory, but for your own mod at home, what you would do is you just basically take off the filter here and then you would rotate it 90 degrees to get that negative um, display uh, kind of uh, modification. So I, I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to put this aside and just grab one for you here. Now, this one is already assembled. It has a battery in the back. This is 
different than the unit we've been working on here, okay? Now you can notice here that this one has no characters displayed, no numerals. We have, of course, the, um, the world map and we have the analog clock here. But what I've done with this one already is taken off that factory uh, polarized filter. So this is a polarized filter here that I took from a, you know, those 3D glasses that you see at the movies. And let's see what happens when I put this over the display here. Okay, so you can see that in this orientation we get a, a negative display, right? Now, I go ahead and take that filter again and rotate it 90 degrees, and I get that standard display that you would get in the store, right? So this polarized filter that I'm playing around with is the exact same thing that's right here on the edge that's been glued to this display. Okay, so when you're talking about making a negative display, basically what you're doing is you're taking the factory version of this off of this. And usually what people will do, at least, you know, the month I've been working on this from what I've seen in the community and talking with other people, is they decide which part of the, um, the uh, display that they want to make a negative filter, and they go ahead and then use a, um, a scalpel or a hobby knife, and they go ahead and cut that portion out carefully. Sometimes they'll even remove the whole glass and uh, go for a full negative display on, on everything. Okay. Um, if I was going to make this a negative display, I would go ahead and slowly pry from one corner, remove the standard polarized filter. You'd be left with a lot of thick glue that is used to glue that filter down. And then I'd go ahead and grab my goof off you know, give it a, you know, a liberal spray, get a Q-tip, I like to use these pointed Q-tips here, and give it a nice clean, maybe use a microfiber towel like this, and get it nice and clean like this looks. And then you would orient the new polarized filter in whichever orientation you want to give you the standard display, which wouldn't make sense, or the negative display, which is what you're going for, okay? All right, so that's basically how to break it down. So not everybody do does this. A lot of people go ahead and just take out the display from the case and then they cut already into it. You know, a lot of people have done that and they've done really, really well. I like to break it down because look at all these components that can get sprayed by that goof off, right? I like to keep these other parts relatively dry. All right, so let's go ahead and get to reassembly. So what we're going to do is we'll set the display aside for now. We're going to go back to this plastic housing here. Okay. And you're basically just going to reverse everything you've done. Now that big tooth we were talking about here, let's see if I can get it to focus. Okay. That big tooth, which is, uh, sorry, that big tooth right here to the left, that's always going to be at your six o'clock position. So knowing the display of this watch, I know that these dots are on the top, which means my six o'clock position is down here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put this back in like a sandwich and I'm going to clip the display underneath these two teeth, one and two. And then I'm going to go to the big tooth part and do the reverse and pull back and try to install the main display. Okay. And so let's take a look at how that looks. Okay, you can see that the uh, big tooth here on the left is, is covering that display, and then we have the two teeth here covering the display. So we're, we're pretty good to go here. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and put these foam spacers back. Okay, we're gonna do one, and we're going to do two. Okay, all right. Now here you can see that the, uh, there are two slots where these foam spacers go to, one here, and one here, and you can see that the one on the left is longer, so we'll take our longer foam, and it doesn't matter, both sides are the same. Okay, we'll put that down in the longer slit. Okay, and let's do the same thing for the uh, shorter one here. Great, okay. Now let's go ahead and take that opaque piece, like here. All right, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for two cutouts at the bottom of the frame here. So you can see how the top here doesn't have a cutout. The bottom here has a cutout here, 
and has a cutout here. And so what we're going to do is the big teeth of this opaque, which is going to be right here and right here, you're going to have the prominent part of the uh, plastic pointing up, and we're going to line those in with the, uh, with the openings in that frame. So just like that. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and take the uh, other piece here. And there's no correct orientation here. It's just left or right. You can see that there's a little tongue here and a tongue here, and those are going to match into the two tongues left and right. And the foam on these, the four pieces of the foam, should be pointing up. Okay. Now we're going to take the uh, circuit board, and you're going to notice one side has that big black square, and the other side just has nothing. So we're going to go ahead and put the black square facing the downward part. Now what you have to think is, okay, so which way do I put this in? Do I put it in this way? Do I put it in this way? Well, the easy way to do it is you look for these two holes, okay? So here on the motherboard, you have a hole up here. You have another hole down here, okay? If we go to our frame here, those two holes are going to line up with this tooth here and that tooth right there. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like in the wrong orientation. Okay, so that's the right orientation. Uh, actually, that's the right orientation. Okay, so if I line it up this way, okay, where I try to match this hole in the circuit board with the tooth on the white frame, you can see that there's some overlap, right? It's not sitting flush, right? It's not sitting flush. Now, if I go ahead and rotate this 180 degrees, and let's line up this part of the circuit board with that tooth, and we give it a little tap here, now you can see that the board, circuit board really lies actually lower than the plastic frame. Okay, so that's that part's pretty much done. And that's that's actually I think one of the harder parts to do. So you're if you've gotten this far, you're doing pretty well. Alright, next thing we're gonna do is uh, take this part, okay, and we're gonna reinstall this tiny spring uh, that came off. Now, the way to find uh, the orientation for, or the position for that is to turn this door, this piece of plastic over, okay? And you're gonna look for a button here that says AC, okay? The spring is not gonna go into the hole for the AC, it's gonna go into the hole just above that, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that, turn it over, okay? And you can see right up here on the top is where that uh, that spring is going to go. Okay, it's going to go right over here. So we'll put this down. We'll take our spring. And you're going to insert the thinner part of the spring because the spring actually has a thick part and a thinner part. Okay. And we're going to go in and put that at the very top right there. Okay, and that's, that's what it should look like. So there's our spring right there, and there's our AC button right there. Okay, now I'm going to leave it in this position. Okay, I'm going to take my other component here, and now we have to figure out, okay, where does this go? So what I'd like to look for are landmarks here. So we have this big piece here, okay? And we also have a big piece here and a big piece here. So I know it's either going to go into one of these two. I also have uh, two contact points here and here. And I know that those definitely need to hit contact points here and here. So this is obviously the correct orientation. It would not make sense if I did it this way because even though this big part would line up with this slot, these two contact points would not be hitting anything on the uh, circuit board. Okay, so that's, that's how to find that. And we're going to keep this white part down so that way our spring doesn't fall off. Okay, and then we'll invert this over. 
and we'll just go ahead and redo what we did before. So we'll look for those clips at the very top. Okay, I kind of got stuck here on the towel. One second, there we go. Probably not the best service to be working on, I guess. Goop. Okay, so now let's go ahead and reattach these clips here. So you can just squeeze here, squeeze here at the top, squeeze here. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll we'll double check our clips here to make sure that they're down. So I'll also kind of push down on them here. Okay. All right, so that looks pretty good. All right, and you can see that our time is is kind of running already. All right, now when it comes to uh, clearing, we have to go back now. I'm not sure exactly what this does, but I know anytime you take apart the battery and you reassemble the battery, or if you change the battery out, they tell you to push the clear. In fact, that's why on the back here, there's instructions for that battery that says after battery replacement, make contact with the AC using tweezers. I'm, I'm gonna be using a uh, paper clip here that I've kind of made into two pieces, okay? And we're gonna go to the back and look for that AC button again, which should be next to our spring. So you can see, here's our AC button there. There's our spring that we installed earlier. You're gonna put one point of your tweezer or paper clip into there, and then the other part, just touch another piece of metal. Okay, and then that should give an all clear. All right, and I believe that resets it, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so every time you push that all clear and touch the piece of metal, it sets this back to 12. So you're, I guess that means all clear AC. All right, so that looks pretty good. So now at this point, since we're about to put the housing back, I'll give the glass a nice little clean here. Okay, not too much pressure, just a little bit. Okay, great. We'll go ahead and uh, take our housing now. Okay, and let's remember that we should be in the right orientation, so I'm reading these letters upright, and which means that my frame here should be upright also. Put that frame in the back. Take a little toothpick here and kind of settle that piece down if need be. Great, and then we'll take our clock and put that down in here. All right, now the last part here to look at is these contact points. Now you'll notice there's a couple pushers here, okay? And you'll notice that there are these uh, metal contact points here. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that these metal contact points where my toothpick are, are inside so that way the button can press inside of them. So let me show you what I mean here. Let me take this off again. Here's the, uh, the pusher. And you can see every time I push on that, you see, it's pushing down. That should be pushing down on, get this to focus. That should be pushing down on this right here, right? And so because it should be pushing down on there, really you want this contact point behind here. So that way the pusher can push into it. So I set this down. Okay, make sure I have the right orientation. Okay, and then I'm going to take a toothpick here and just gently nudge this piece of plastic here and here. Much better. Okay, let's go to the other side here, here, and here. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, so home stretch here. Let's go ahead and grab our gasket or your O-ring. If it looks pretty dry, just get some oil, some light oil, you know, and just coat the outside of that uh, O-ring with your between your fingers and then put the O-ring back on, okay? So we have that O-ring on now. And then we'll go ahead and take our cover here. Put this back, take our screws.
Okay, and I don't tighten all the way, I just keep it a little loose. Alternate where you're screwing down. And before I tighten, I'm gonna go ahead and walk around the back case door and make sure that that gasket, that rubber O-ring is not sticking out anywhere. So this looks clean. Now I can go ahead and tighten down everything. All right, and that's pretty much it. You're, you're good to go. All right, hope you guys found this video helpful. Take care.